Hi everyone, it's me, Rudy from the Magicians Forum. And I'm here with two very, very special guests, two very talented men who are gonna be giving lectures at this coming up Magicians Forum Live on August 7th and 8th, which if you haven't got your tickets, I would ask that you do that. You can get them at basicsofmagic.com. Please keep in mind, if you can't attend the event, which is two days of magic lectures as well as breakout sessions, don't worry about it because you can still get your tickets and you're going to get recordings of all of the sessions. So I hope you'll take me up on this really incredible offer for 10 bucks. Great lectures. Uh, Jason Dean will also be there as well as Steve Reynolds. So I'm really looking forward to it. Very, very quickly, George, to be quite honest, I'm, I'm new to your magic. I had my friend Steve Freeberg, and I believe you, you know Steve because he yes I know Steve some, very well yeah he work, he does some work on a trick of yours that I believe is I first saw in Osmosis uh, I believe or it's called Osmosis maybe you can correct me there but it's an effect of yours oh that's right Osmosis yeah yeah so it's a some really good work on what is a, already really a great trick but can you tell us a little bit about yourself because uh, again some of us don't yeah sure um, well. <laughs> I've always had a sort of an inquiring mind that, you know, I became interested in magic probably, probably um, in the early 70s. And um, I mean, the first book that I bought, actually, I can remember it quite vividly. And it was 1976. It was the year that Carl Fulvis brought out self-working card tricks. Mm -hmm. So that's, that was my first book. Um, I started going into the magic shop, Roy Walton's magic shop, around about that time. Um, I always remember that because I bought the book in the shop. So 1976 was when the book came out. Mm. In fact, I think it was 1977 that I bought the book in Roy's shop. So that was my sort of first introduction to Roy. Mm. And um, I began to meet other magicians that, that, that come into the shop at that time, namely Gordon Bruce and Peter Duffy. Mm. And there's also another young man, a very talented magician called Stephen Hamilton. Mm. Um, he, Stephen and I were, were pretty close and um, we used to share quite a lot of things back then, you know, um, but there was really, when it started, there was only four. There was Gordon, Peter, a guy called Dave Robertson and Stephen Hamilton. That was the four originals. Mm. I came along later, probably the late 70s, early 80s. But it was Roy was obviously the catalyst to everything. You know, and it was great having Roy there because, it, you know, early on when you read things, very difficult to understand sleight of hand when you're first learning. You could say to Roy, you know, what is the diagonal palm shift? And you, he would do it, you know, and you could see exactly what it looked like. Therefore, you had a name. Mm -hmm. So we were very lucky in that respect. Um, the second book that I bought was a mistake. <laughs> Not buying the book, but the timing of it was a mistake. Mm -hmm. I bought Expert Card Technique, would you believe? Mm -hmm. And that is a quantum leap. Wow. <laughs> from self-working card tricks. Right. Um, so I, it took me 20 years before I realised just how, how good that book was. And I never really understood anything in the book until that length of time had passed. I bought Royal Roads uh, probably at 1981 or something. <laughs> you know, so um, Expert Card Technique, although it was a very, very good book, I bought it far too early. Gosh. Wow. So that's, I was lucky enough to, to know these guys quite early on. You know, 16 years of age, 1977. Wow. Um, I got to know these guys pretty, pretty quickly. Um, so Gordon and Peter um, and Dave Robertson started it all uh, in, in, in Glasgow. That was it. And Stephen, he came along later. Then, of course, Jerry Sadowitz was there as well. And there were others, uh, Dave Campbell. Uh, and wow. then as the years passed, others came and went. You know, um, so there was lots of guys sharing ideas back then. Coffee shops and pubs were full of magicians coming and going <laughs> in Glasgow. Gosh, that sounds incredible. That's those incredible influences on your magic at such a young age. Lucky you. Well, it shows in your work. I, I watched your second deal, just that uh, video. I think that Big Blind Media put out. I mean, you're just you, it, you, it, you can't see anything. It just looks absolutely phenomenal. So. 
Uh, oh, that's really kind of you to say that, you know. Very talented. Now, John, everybody knows you. Most folks are familiar with your work, but maybe right now they don't even recognize you. You look quite <laughs> different. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Like, who is this guy? It's, it really is John Bannett. He just, <laughs> maybe you can share a little bit about that, because I, I just, we were talking offline, but just a, a little bit of what's behind this. this oh, movie. well, you know, it's, it, it may be kind of silly, but I, I retired in April, and so sort of symbolically, I, uh, I stopped wearing my contacts and, uh, and, and shaved off the beard, so that that was sort of a symbolic gesture more than anything else mm -hmm. and then and and uh, i have not always had a beard okay oh, really? early on i did not and on those videos i did not that's right and uh I, I was talking about the l and l video yeah yeah or the a1 multimedia that's the a1 yeah the a1. And, and i spent eight years in the in the air force where you can't oh. have a beer, right? So anyway, and then this, of course, is my quarantine do. <laughs> you look really sharp. It's a good. It's a good look for you. And I bet when oh. you're in the courtroom, you look really smart with your suit on and this gray hair. You, you look like a boss. <laughs> so. Yeah, as long as I don't look smarter than I actually am. <laughs> now, yeah, I have a question for you, uh, sure. John. So I've been. I've been doing a little project for Real Magic Magazine here, and I've been learning all these tricks. But um, so I'm, I'm accumulating a lot of magic here in my brain. But then when it comes down to the moment of performing, I kind of go back to those same five or six tricks that I've been doing for years. Now, you have come up with so much stuff. How much more do you have magic in your mind, both that you've created or learned? What, when it comes down to, you're at a party or something, somebody says, John, can you please smoke us with the trick? Are you more prone to do something old school that you created back in the day? Or what, what would you what would you perform when asked something? Yeah, um, it depends. If it's people who haven't seen me do tricks before, then there's this couple of tricks that I will always do. Those are, uh, I have an opening trick called Line of Sight. Then I would, uh, and I use that in order to in order to uh, gather the aces. Then I, then I do a spectator cuts the aces, and then I do my handling of twisting the aces, and then I do the aces, just this thing. And, um, and, if, and that's long enough for most people, but mm -hmm. if, um, and sometimes I'll just leave the line of sight out too, if I have opportunity to move the aces to the top. But those are real, all very old. Um, and even my handlings, the things that I do differently, that's very old, but that's mm -hmm. kind of my go-to set. And then I'll do whatever I'm working on at the moment. <laughs> well, so your version of Twisting the Aces, do tell, is that published somewhere? Yeah, it's in, it's in my uh, lecture notes. And the handling is um, um, virtually identical to uh, Twisting the Aces, which why I hesitated to put it in print for a while. Time. Um, but I have some presentational ideas that I think really work, and I have an ending to it, oh, where, wow. um, where all the cards turn face up, and then all the cards turn face down. But it's in a it's in a playful way with the audience, and uh, um, I think it's well. First of all, I I think twisting the aces is the best card trick ever. Mm -hmm. You know, once you do all the trade offs involved. And, boil it all down that's the winner in my book well uh, just really quickly just on that note it was the first card trick that really convinced me or actually set me on this path to learning card magic i saw it performed by some guy at a magic shop just fooled the heck out of me i had no way of comprehending how they were turning over and i said where did i learn that and he pointed me back then to a, a videotape of michael amar's easy to master card miracles and mm. i mean and that man i just that set me on the path and i just i love card magic ever since so i believe you're you're totally right I, mean, you know, I agree with you that was probably the first trick that i ever saw that convinced me to keep going on this thing so so for my sake and for the sake of others are your are those lecture notes still available uh, yeah, they are. I, I actually, um, I will be doing some stuff out of those uh, during the lecture. Awesome. And um, 
but not not the twisting the aces. People, okay. Most people don't want to see another version of twisting. <laughs> well, I do, so I'll be per, I'll be so do I. my notes. <laughs> yeah, Joe and Paul Kitty. Uh, yeah, um, George, so you're underground. I know that you have some. Well, I, I think people say that, but I, I I don't understand that at all. <laughs> yeah, because I'm curious about that. What is what is I guess what does that mean when, when somebody says somebody's underground? Does that mean they're just um, they're relatively unknown, or they're intentionally trying to maintain a low profile and keep their secrets hidden? I mean, what is what is this underground title? And so, do you well? It's intentional? not it's not something that it's something that other people have said. You know, it's certainly not coming from me. I mean, I I, I don't really have any explanation of you know I'm not underground you know I, I'm here <laughs> you know I mean I've been publishing stuff since 1995 which is not that long um you know um you know yeah, um so mm -hmm. I, I don't I don't get where it comes from to be honest I mean I, I don't I don't visit a lot of conventions I don't go to a lot of conventions that's one thing that I'm not particularly um, I don't know the reason why. I, I used to go a lot uh, when conventions were smaller. I like the small, intimate affairs, you know. Um, I went to the Buffalo Convention. Uh, I was, you know, invited over there, and that was great. It was very small. Um, we used to have a convention here in Edinburgh many, many years ago, which was very small. And... Um, I don't know if John remembers, but many, many years ago when Black, you know, I'm talking over 30 years ago when Blackpool was fairly small. I mean, it, it, it's now the biggest, you know, convention. Oh, now it's the biggest one in the world. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, one time when you when you watched the close up, you were there and you seen the close up close up. Mm. There was no need for big screens and things, yeah. um, and it was quite intimate. Um, once it started getting grand and big and you know you're you're watching close up on big 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 screens that's a good bit away and for me there was just too many people there you know the dealers are great you know that because you've got so much there but it's just so big you know um i like the small you know intimate type of affairs really um i i don't go to a lot of them maybe that's what it stems from i don't know um that's interesting. Glasgow is quite a kind of sort of it's it's I it's a strange. It's, uh, I noticed that they're, they're a bit reluctant to share outside the circle sometimes. <laughs> you know the four individuals that I'd mentioned earlier on: Gordon, Peter, Dave Robertson, and Steve Hamilton. Well, Bobby Bernard uh, named them the Sc the Scottish Mafia in <laughs> in the early seventies. You know, um, they just sort of kept themselves to themselves, you know, and I don't know. It's just it's a strange mm. thing, this underground thing. I can't explain it, to be honest. So would somebody more like Roy Walton, for example, would there was stuff, somebody was talking to some magician. I forget which trick it was, but he spoke of how Roy Walton had some work on that, but it's unpublished and it's really quiet uh, on the down low and really didn't seem to be the kind of guy who really wanted to be out there would you say he would be more of a considered an underground ma magician or or john is this just a weird thing that magicians come up with and doesn't really exist <laughs> what what being underground being underground what does that mean what do you, do you... i i you know it's it, to my great regret i never met roy walton okay um one time i was uh doing a lecture uh in edinburgh and and when I was giving the lecture, Roy was on vacation in New York City. Ah. So I missed well, that's my a shame. Oh, yeah. I that's a shame. Actually, actually meet him. Um, like I said, to my regret. Mm. But uh, I, I don't know. Underground, underground to me means the guy's really good, but, but we, we don't know that much about him. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, and George, uh, I, I I think your association with big blind media will certainly help get you. Yeah, out I of would say that that's right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, John. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Owen Packard's a, an absolute gentleman, as you know. I mean, he's a lovely, lovely man, mm -hmm. and yeah, he certainly helped uh, my career in, in in the recognition department. Anyway, 
you know, when I go to conventions, people, I meet people and I don't know them, but they kind of know me and it's, it's probably through that, you know, it's probably through the big blind media. Owen knows um, how to make you look good too. Channel, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's a whiz kid. He's, he's a whiz with a camera. He's, he's yeah. fantastic, you know, such a lovely man, you know. Yeah. Um, well, maybe speaking to the underground nature of magic, you know, we're always looking for these deep hidden secrets. We collect all these books looking for that holy grail. Um, you know, for, and I'll ask it both, to both of you. John, are there certain secrets, certain effects that you've created or secrets that you've learned that you just won't ever share with anybody? That you just, you smoke people with it, you fool other magicians with it, but as it pertains to ever sharing that or publishing it, you're just like, I'll just take it to the grave. Uh, no. Um... I don't, I'm not, a, I'm not a firm believer in keeping up secrets mm. forever. And there have been some people whose work is lost to history because mm. they either were that type or yeah. someone got a hold of their material that was that type, okay? Um, now, what I will do is I will not show some things around until I have the opportunity to uh, stake my claim either in a video or, mm -hmm. uh, or a book or something or or in my genie column and uh, and, and and then you know sky's the limit then because the problem is I, I'm not so much worried about people stealing this stuff as I as I am them making variations and the variations get out before the trick does yeah. you know what I mean yeah, that's always annoying and, uh, and that really clouds the issue of well whose trick is it anyway and so, long story short, uh, I don't believe in keeping secrets forever, no. Okay, now, and George, how about you? Again, you've been friends with some of these really great guys. And again, from what I heard, Roy Walton, there's certain things he said, I'm not going to publish. I don't want anybody to know. I'll show you, maybe teach you, but you keep keep it a secret. And well, what about I, you? I always found Roy very generous. I mean, I don't really know of anything that, 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 that um, I mean, certainly, like, just like John says, if Roy has work, worked on something or if, if I have worked on something that, that's fairly new and I haven't shown it around much, to be honest, well, I kind of want to get used out of it first, mm. you know, and start showing it, you know, to particularly lay people and getting the use of it. And then, you know, I, I will eventually share it. I, I, I don't like keeping things forever either. I mean, mm. um, there are certain things that I do uh, that are f not new because there's nothing new really, but it's, you know, something that I've come up with recently mm. that I want to do and use without, you know, sharing it too quickly. I just want to, you know, get the use out of it first. Um, but certainly no, I mean, if someone comes up to me and says, you know, is there anything new you'd like to, you know, submit to a magazine or something like that? You know, that's not a problem. You know, I don't mind doing that. That's, you know, it's no problem. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's difficult to be original, you know. But just going back to Roy slightly, um, you know, Roy was, <laughs> Roy was a, original in a lot of things you know he, he, that was one of the beauty of he had a fantastic understanding of mm. all aspects of particularly card magic you know you know it, it wasn't just the, the Gilbraith principle for example was understood to the nth degree mm. you know the stay stack was understood to the nth degree all these principles and things like that were understood really really well a bit like Alex, cut from the same cloth as Alex Elmsley. Mm, yeah. You know, um, Alex was, I met Alex twice, you know, and I was in awe of the man each time, you know. <laughs> uh, so he was, he was a, you know, a true genius. Uh, wow. He was just someone who was, he, he would share as well, you know, he would share things without any problems. I remember him showing me some things that wasn't published, you know? Um, and that, that, that's a strange thing because I know that one or two things that Alex showed me weren't published and I've kept them simply because Alex never put them in print. So I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't, I would just keep them to myself really, you know, they're not mine. Mm, wow. Um, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you a story. Uh, I met Alex Helmsley in Spain, okay, and it was 
just after the time he re-entered the magic scene. Okay, he was out for a while, and he had come out with his uh, yeah. computer trick DVD. And uh, I was at the um, score is score and yeah. uh, and he he was there. And we were since we were the only two people who spoke English. They always put us next to each other, which was good. <laughs> great. I got to spend most of the weekend with uh, with Alex. He's a very, very, very interesting guy, yes. and, and, a, and a perfect gentleman. I mean, he really is amazing. Yes, and liked liked his whiskey. Liked his whiskey, huh? <laughs> he liked <laughs> his whiskey. Yes, loved the little whiskey. Wow. Well, uh, this has really been great. Maybe we can just close out this time by you sharing a little bit about what you will be sharing with us at the Magicians Forum Live. But John, what, what do you got for us? What will you be showing us? <laughs> well, okay. Um, it's always been surprising to me that nobody reads Genie Magazine. Or sure. I have a column in Genie Magazine. It's been running for five years. And an awful lot of people I run into I'll make a reference to it and they won't know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they say the way to keep things secret is to put them in print. Right. But, um, you know, I, uh, I, I, I have tried to make the tricks that I put in my column, you know, top notch. And so what I plan on doing since it's been four years now is doing a couple of tricks, awesome. one or two from each year. Wow. Give you a survey. And there are tricks that either I particularly like or I think they've been overlooked. And so uh, that will be the cornerstone. But I have some other things up my sleeve, like uh, some things out of Lucky and, uh, and maybe a packet trick, maybe. Awesome. Wow. <laughs> well, I can't wait. That sounds great. Now, how about you, George? What about you? I'll probably start about, I'll probably take a little bit of time uh, and giving a little insight into into my background as you say there's you know I'm not as well known as John um, so not too much time but I'll probably start off with that sort of thing and then um, uh, the first three things that I'll do I'm going to sort of talk about how you can merge tricks it's quite important when you do tricks one after the other that you don't actually convolute the, the effects as you go along so I just want to talk a little bit how you can, um, you know, perform routines and have them blend into one another with, with a bit of clarity of effect. Um, that'll probably be the first three effects, uh, a sort of an ambitious thing, moving into an elevator thing, and then a thing that I published called Double Swap Sandwich, which was based on a an Elmsley thing, and then... You know, one of my favourite tricks is the assembly. So I've got a few of them, one or two of them. Uh, one in particular, which I haven't shown around much at all. So, and then give give them the opportunity to ask any questions. If there's any slights and things like that, you know, um, I'm fully open to going into the detail of anything that anyone wants to to discuss. You know, in relation to slights, you know. Anything at all doesn't doesn't matter. If I can do it, I'll 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 ex, you know, explain it and any nuances that I know I can pass on. And that's not a problem. Very excited about it. You know, you were talking about those days when conventions were smaller and and stuff like that. And you know, what I've been trying to do with these the magicians form live and a lot of our lectures online is give people the opportunity to actually interact with magicians like you yeah. ask questions see things really close up the way that we used to so it's trying yes. to simulate those old yes. days also you know we have what are at the magicians forum we have these what are called the saturday sessions where we do this magicians from all over the world we come together and we share stuff and it's you know with magic shops now closing down the brick and mortars are sort of a thing of the past we miss that i never got to really experience that like you all and i feel like these sort of create that type of atmosphere for learning and interaction so the people who tune in to the magicians forum live this weekend they're when they have a question it's not me saying hey scott is asking blah 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 i say scott if you have your video up i highlight him and he gets to talk to legends like yourselves i, I think that's a right really 
no. So do you control that then, Rudy? Because that was one thing I noticed um, when I'd used Zoom before, mm -hmm. when there's a few people and people begin to talk, it's quite easy for them to talk over one another. Yeah. So do you control that side of it, I take it? Yeah, I've eliminated that. What I do is I, I'm in control of, I don't just let it be sort of this gallery view where it bounces around based on whatever voice or right. uh, dog bark or, or fart or whatever that pulls the camera to them. It's me directing using the spotlight to ensure that whoever's talking, they're talking. So we won't have those kind of interruptions that you'll sometimes see gotcha. in Zoom video conferences. So hopefully that will ensure people who are even tuning and watching this right now that this will be um, this will be quality. You're not get, there won't be the interruptions and the the constant shifting of camera view. Uh, it'll be very focused on the presenters and giving them the respect that they're due and the attention that they're due. It's only ten dollars, which I think for for fantastic days of of these these incredibly talented magicians, and you get the recordings, and then there's breakout sessions where we get to. Uh, just share our, our magic with one another. I think you're providing great value to the magicians who are going to take us up on this opportunity. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you're welcome. you both very much. Nice All right. you. My pleasure, really. Nice to meet you. you. Know, thank you. A lot of people have a lot of time on their hands these days because <laughs> they're at home. And, uh, and I'm one of them. So I'm, I'm happy to do this because yeah, me too. Uh, it's yeah. going to be a new experience for me too. Great. Well, thank you. So uh, that's it. So again, I'm Rudy. The Magicians Forum Live is this weekend. It's Friday and Saturday, August 7th, August 8th. Tickets are 10 bucks, and you can get them over at basicsofmagic.com. I really do hope to see you there, and please invite all your magician buddies. All right, gentlemen, I will see you uh, this weekend. Thanks a lot. Okay, thanks, Rudy. Bye. Bye, right. John. Bye. Okay.